So, in the previous segment, we looked at how we would translate a while loop. And so we saw this example here where we had to uh, extract, well, in the, certainly in the while loop, but the second, this is the second example where we looked at a while loop that involved an array element where we had to extract the element from memory and it required a load word. So typically with an array element where we need to go and get it out of memory, it's going to require a three-step, this the shifting and the adding and the loading. So review that one. Um, there was also the alternative way of doing that instruction. Instead of checking for um, um, inequality, right? Instead of well, instead of checking to see if these aren't equal, you could have done something like this, where you could have checked to see. Um, after you've extracted the array element out. This entire block then is what goes there after those three lines. After, um, instead of checking to see if they're not equal, you could say if these two are equal. And the, kind of the, um, the transcript that you have for yourself is that if they are equal, right, as you go through it, you know that you want to do the loop. You want to jump or do the loop. So if they are equal, we want to Go do the sum. And so this does the sum. Um, if they are not equal, then we want to exit. So if we, if they are not equal, we go to the next line, which requires that we have to jump out um, to an exit label. And then otherwise we do the sum, add i, and after we do that sum, we really need to go back up to the top. So this should be a jump to the top after we've done the addition. So right before the exit, there should be a jump to the top. So make that, make sure you show that correction in there. Now, a while loop is a little bit different in that the test comes after um, the first few lines, the first line at least, has been executed. While loops um, are probably some of the least frequently used um, looping structures. It's a little bit strange in that you have the while statement, then you have a semicolon after the test. Um, so it is a little bit um, strange for, for most of us who don't use it on a regular basis. So let's see, how would you do this while loop? It looks like you just simply jump straight into the instructions that are required um, by the C code. And that first instruction is an add, right? So we're going to add i equals i plus j. So we're not working with an immediate, it's just add and store the value inside of i. So s0 equals s0 plus j, which is going to be the s1. So s0 equals s0 plus s1. So we do the addition. But then after we do the addition, we also have to do a test to decide whether or not we're going to come back up and repeat this addition. So the test here, let's do the branch if not equals. And we're comparing an i and k. So that's going to be the s0 and the s2. So if i is not equal to k, then we want to go back up to the top. So when it comes to do while loops, um, we will find that it's often convenient to use the logic that's here. If this is not equals, you'll see that a not equal B and E makes this a little bit easier. Um, certainly, we could have used a branch if equals, and it would have been a bit more convoluted. Um, but this is arguably the easiest translation of that do while loop.
Now, um, this instruction, um, requires a little bit more work. Um, again, with a do loop, we're going to do just what we did before. That was the add s0, s1. So I know that I'm going to have to come back up here and I'm going to do an addition s0. Ooh. So I think I might have given these different labels. Yeah, these are different for the substitutions. So do an addition and then I is T0. Um, so I equals I plus J and what I'm going to do, because it looks like I'm missing the J here, I will call this J. Let's see what the okay so let's call it J um, so there's a typo here but let's work with this and there we have I equals I plus J and then I need to test right there's nothing more in that do loop um, as far as the statement goes we're going to do a test now and so what I'm going to have to do is extract what's inside of the array. So a sub i, I have to get out. And I'll have to multiply the index um, by 4. So I'm going to take the index, which is t0, and shift it left twice. And then once I have that index, I'm going to have to add it to the beginning of the array and put that into another t, a temporary variable. Again, I'm doing the SAL pattern. And then I can do a load word. That's the third part of this and extract that out of memory. So I will store it into another temporary variable and I'll use the address t2 which is um, the offset t1 plus the address that represents the beginning of the array. So now that I have those three statements, I've, I have extracted a sub i. Now what I want to do is make a decision as to whether or not I go back up to the top. So I know that it's a while loop, and typically with while loops, I'll have my logic here, not equal, match the logic that's there. Branch if not equals, um, and I have a sub i, which is now stored inside of t3. And I'm going to compare this to k. Um, so I'll fix this, and I'll say that k is t3. Mm. I'll say that k is t6. So branch if not equal to k. So I'm going to compare a sub i to my k value, which is t6. And if they are not equal, then I want to go back up and repeat my loop. If they are equal, then I just want to go to the next line. So this is my do while loop that involves a branch. Um, if my do while loop that involves an array access. Um, and then the final one that we're going to look at is um, a while loop that involves kind of manipulating the index a bit. So we'll see that in the next example.